Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Um, I work on Paul Kaufman lab. Andrea, we're excited to discuss with you the composition and regulation of uh, nuclear associated domains or not. And I would like to share with you some of our recently published data and then continue to our new data that kind of uh, directs the or pay the direction where the project is taking our uh, moving next. Uh, let me start with a brief introduction into um, NADS. We know that heterochromatic regions are self-associated separated regions of um, inactive chromatin that localize in two major locations within the cell. The nuclear periphery um, that is shown in this micrograph in a dark uh, gray color, and they refer to lamin-associated chromatin a lot. And nucleoli periphery, you could see this um, dense uh, area surrounding nucleoli in the center of the micrograph. The term NAS or not nucleoli associated domain. Uh, both of them tend to replicate later during S phase, as was shown by Gilbert Lab. Um, however, the molecular anchors that mediate pattern of um, heterochromatic regions to lamina and nucleoli might be very different. Uh, we know that lamina B components like lab 2 B. <clears throat> Uh, are important for uh, lamina association. While a couple of years ago, uh, there was a paper coming from Paul's lab indicating that Ki67 is critical for not tethering to nucleoli, and a subset of NADs relies on Ki67. Um, NADs were characterized previously in human cells, and we were interested in understanding uh, NAD composition function in uh, mouse marine model. Uh, there's a growing evidence that nuclei act as a silencing hub, and there is an example of experiment done in Mangusen lab indicating that um, targeting a gene uh, to nucleoli area or to nucleus periphery can lead to silencing, transcriptional silencing of this gene. And while we are interested in characterization of mouse, um, now we also came across this question um, that was first asked by um, in Boston Sinsel lab, and you can see here. Um, um, the illustration of idea that about stochastic distribution of LADs and NADs in postmitotic cells. Uh, in this experiment, the peripheral, um, in mother cell, the peripheral uh, heterochromatic regions LADs were um, marked, and then there were traced in live cells. And as you can see here, the do in, in the daughter cell, there these regions can be either decorated in the nuclear periphery or decorated in the interior of the cell. And um, if the nucleola is marked by nuclear phosmin, which is shown here in red, you could appreciate that some sequences are ending up in the nucleoli periphery. Um, and that's this idea in the field that um, the two sequences can end up uh, in two different locations in postmitotic cells. Um, however, this does not exclude the presence, the potential presence of uh, nucleoli specific regions that are localized around nucleoli and uh, keep on ending up in the same location after mitosis. So to address this question and characterize mouse nuts, we perform nut seek, and here is a, um, a schematic representation of our experimental pipeline. We do use cross-linked and non-cross-linked methods to isolate nucleoli, and after purification, nucleoli is subjected to our QC control. As you can see here, it's based on phase microscopy. We uh, looked for enrichment in uh, ribosomal DNA repeats because we know that nucleoli are organized around our DNA repeats. And we also check the protein composition. More specifically, we'll look for um, enrichment in nucleoli proteins such as fibrillaring. And also, we try to exclude um, limins because we would like to separate LAS and NAS in our assays. Um, after our nucleoli perhaps are passing QC, we proceed for isolation of DNA and sequencing. And the ready sequences are analyzed by NAT Finder. This is a software package which is available at bioconductor.org. It was developed by part of our team led by Julie Ju. And one of the major features of uh, NatFinder is um, local background correction, with, which we found specifically important uh, when we analyze uh, mouse acrocentric chromosomes. And so here I'd like to give you an snapshot of, as an example, a snapshot of IGV browser uh, where we analyze um, nucleolus associated domains in mouse and embryonic cells uh, in maps first. And as you can see here, the upper tracks show replication time. And uh, 
a lot of not for the category that was predicted before based on uh, some stencil experiments. Um, you could see that uh, knots, which we term type one knots, tend to replicate later as expected for heterochromatic regions. And they are overlapping with lots that are specific for mass and also C lots, the quantitative lots that are not changing during differentiation from embryonic stem cells to neural progenitors and um, astrocytes. Um, as you can see here, these regions are also decorated by K9 dimethylation marks, and they are often flanked by K27 trimethylation marks, but not, uh, but not enriched in the in a part of the nuts. They're also gene poor regions, um, and this was predicted also in the initial analysis of nuts in human cells. At the same time, we observed a different type of nuts, and we termed it type 2 nuts. In contrast to type 1 nuts, these tend to replicate early, and um, they're also decorated by K9 dimethylation marks. However, they do not overlap with C LADs or LADs. In contrast, they overlap with C I LADs. They're regions that were never found to be associated with nuclear periphery. Um, type 2 nuts are also enriched in K27 trimethylation marks, and the gene density is much higher than in type 1 nuts. We identify these two classes of knots by using two different methods. Here is an example of cross-link method, but we also use non-cross-link non -cross methods. And we um, find both type of knots and, and both methods. Um, however, we also use uh, tree and fish to uh, confirm the existence of type 2 knots. And here I would like to give you an example of um, images from type 1 knots. You could see that nucleoli are shown in red, they stain by fibrillary. The nuclear periphery is nuclear pore complex proteins, and the fish is in green. Um, you can see that type 1 and type 2 knots associate with nucleoli, and here is the group analysis of our association. Um, so the frequency of association is much higher than our non knot negative controls. In contrast, when we score the association with lamina, you could see that type 1 uh, knot a statistically significant association with um, significantly associated with nuclear periphery, in contrast to three different back probes from type 2 nuts that actually show no significantly different association with nuclear periphery. Thus, by three different methods, we um, think that there is a nucleolytic sequences, uh, and the sequences are um, not fully found in the nuclear periphery. So, when I proceed to um, question what is um, the composition of type 2 nuts and what they packed with. Um, go, on, uh, go to my analysis um, here, you could see the um, processes that type 2 nuts are involved in. And they involve a lot of developmentally regulated processes such as uh, limb generation and organogenesis and development gastrulation. Um, interestingly, uh, while we know that these are heterochromatic regions that tend to uh, replicate later and be transcriptionally repressed, when we dissect this different type of knots, you could see that type 2 knots actually show much higher level of expression compared to type 1 knots. And uh, obviously, overall knots are much more uh, transcriptionally repressed compared to, um, compared to whole genome expression or non knots expression levels. And this is going in um, consistence with previously published data, but the existence of this type 2 knots shown still high expression compared to type 1. And, uh, the fact that this type 2 knots contain developmentally related genes um, kind of highlight the next uh, direction where we initially also wanted to move to understand the changes in knots during differentiation process. And here is just an example of fish data from um, mouse D3 cells, where you could see that type 2 knots uh, in this cell type actually uh, is no longer associated with nucleoli, which are shown in red here, and the fish probe is shown, uh, the back probe is shown in green in contrast to type 1 nuts, uh, which are remain to be associated with nucleoli. Uh, uh, we move next, and uh, we identify nuts in uh, mouse stem cells, F121-9. This work was done by Ajan in Paul's lab. And when we compare mass nuts and F121 nuts, we can see that there is a great overlap between the different nuts, but there is also a very different um, sequences that were identified in both cell types. Um, both cell types have type 1 and type 2 knots, uh, meaning that um, the type 2 knots is not as um, evident, but it's still present in different cell types. And the sequences, again, vary between two different cells. 
uh, here I would like to give you an example of um, um, a GV browser where we have map specific NAS. You can see in the top lines that F21 NAS are early replicated and they are transcriptionally um, active. However, the same sequences in maps are um, presented as NUTs, and they, they were identified as NUTs. They remain to be early replicating, but they're not as transcriptionally active as uh, in stem cells. And map-specific NUTs contain a lot of genes that are participating in uh, granzyme signaling and um, differentiation along an anterior-posterior axis. In contrast, there is an example of um, stem cell-specific NUTs, and as you can see here, there were no longer identified NUTs in lower tracts, which um, show math NUTs. These NUTs are transcriptionally active in math, and uh, they contain some part of the, and here you see there is a switch also in replication time, and in contrast to previous NUTs, they were late replicating time in um, stem cells, and they tend to replicate early in math. Uh, when we look at the processes um, that that are characteristics for characteristics for specific and um, specific nuts. Uh, this involves heparin interacting genes and also a lot of signaling such as SH2, SH3 domain mediated scaffolding. So th th this event participate in a lot of signal transduction pathways. And also um, chemotactic cytokines and um, the example of IGB is actually one of the components of this um, chemotactic signaling. So with this, we would like to conclude that um, there are not specific sequences that are present at least in two distinct cell types, mass and um, stem cells. However, the composition of this NAS varies between different cell types. And um, now this is one of the direction of this project where uh, we are really interested in changes in NAS through our differentiation. And um, right now we're analyzing um, more NAS from uh, human um, stem cells and also so, uh, human fibroblasts. Another question that we became interested in, and it was already addressed for lamin-associated domain, is the fact that heterochromatic feature is important for, uh, what a heterochromatic feature is important for NAD association. Um, to address this question, we use EZH2 inhibitor, two different inhibitors to reduce the level of K27 trimethylation mark, and we look to see whether this uh, reduction in um, <clears throat> methylation mark will affect the NAD integrity. As you can see here, this is an optical section from um, a mast cell uh, where, again, nucleoli are shown in red and uh, fish in green and um, lamin A in blue. Uh, we see that uh, you, in the presence of uh, both inhibitors, we have dissociation of nuts from uh, nuclear periphery and also nucleoli. Here's the quantification. So the lamina score is uh, inconsistent with the previously published data, and now we add some data regarding nucleoli association. There is a significant reduction in association as well. Therefore, being heterochromatic, at least um, in, um, in terms of K27 trimethylation is important for association with uh, nucleoli. We know that um, heterochromatic regions are phase separating, and uh, we would like to test the idea whether phase separation is important for um, not integrity. And to do this experiment, we used um, probe uh, 16 hexandiol that was shown previously to uh, disturb uh, phase separating properties. Um, here you could see their fish data from type 1 nuts, where we used 1% of hexandiol, and we could see that there is no significant, there's some trend for nucleoli, but there is no significant reduction in association with nucleoli, nor with nucleolamina. Um, there's no published data for nucleolamina so far for phase separation, so this is. Um, we got the score and um, we don't know how it is um, going along there, um, other studies. Uh, when we look at type 2 nuts, uh, you could see that there is a dose dependent reduction in association of type 2 nuts with nucleoli, and we use a couple of different probes. And this reduction is not because of cell viability, because that remains, the cell remains viable at the regimes that we're using for hexandiol treatment. So, therefore, I would like to conclude this part of my talk where we identify two types of nuts in fibroblasts and stem cells, and we know that this type of nuts differ between different cell types, and perhaps they're, they contain developmentally regulated genes, so we expect interesting change in throughout differentiation process. We know that heterochromatic mark, as, such as K27 trimethylation, is critical for nut integrity, and it looks like type 2 nuts are more sensitive to changes in phase, uh, during changes in phase separation properties. And this asks, um, leads us to one of the questions whether uh, NAS will uh, 
change their integrity dependent on exposure of stress. And more specifically, we're interested in heat stress because, because of several reasons. First of all, heat stress was shown to uh, affect the phase separation properties. But also, uh, heat stress is a part of uh, inflammation and immune response. And almost every individual is uh, undergoing the stress throughout the lifetime multiple times. One of the observations that um, is known and we made as well is that exposure to heat shock leads to um, rapid accumulation of heat shock protein 70 in the nucleoli. And, um, and later when the cell recovered from stress, you could see that uh, there is a decreased level of uh, HSP-70 in the nucleoli. And we found this um, fact is interesting because of recent publication uh, from Boom Lab where um, you could see that HSP-70 are important in recovery of the cell, uh, specifically because HSP-70 is important for recovering the follicle protein complexes that are actually um, sequestered by nucleoli during the heat shock. And this sequestration of uh, PRC1 and 2 leads to decreased level in K27 trimethylation mark. We know that this mark is important for another integrity, and therefore we aim to, to uh, we try to understand whether uh, heat stress will affect um, not association. Uh, I would just try, to, I would like to remind you that um, especially type two probes, but also type one are decreased by not only by K9 dimethylation mark, but also by K27 trimethylation mark. Uh, type two is like, um, type one is likely to be flanked by these marks, but these marks are important for the integrity of that. And here is our initial experiments that I would like to share with you in mouse and in mouse fibroblasts. Um, you could see that there are some differences between type 2 and type 1 nuts in terms of their association with nucleoli after heat stress. There is a significant decrease in association um, in type 2 nuts compared to type 1. And while we are still analyzing if there is a drop in overall 27 trimethylation mark in these conditions, we notice one interesting detail. Uh, more specifically, if you look at the... Um, Optical section to mass, you could um, see that in control cells, K9 demethylation mark is localized at the nuclear periphery, nuclear interior, and also nucleoli periphery. Uh, in cells treated with heat shock, you see kind of clearance of the interior of the nuclear, uh, nuclear interior, and you could see that there is some decoration by this mark in the nuclear periphery. We are pretty intrigued with this phenomenon and we would like to know whether these two events are um, interrelated. To address this question, we um, we were wondering um, if there are similar mechanisms that drive changes. And one of the ideas is that heat stress leads to activation of stress kinase pathways. And here is just a general overview of how uh, stress kinase um, pathways are mediated. There is a stimulus that activates uh, mitogen-activated protein kinase, kinase, kinase. Uh, that in turn phosphorylates downstream targets, MAPKK. And finally, it phosphorylates MAP case. And MAP case is mediating biological response. It's kind of bottleneck in this um, pathway because there are much more many MKK case and MK case than MAP case. Uh, one of the MAP case that um, we thought would be a good candidate to test, to test was P38. And the reason why we think that P38 is important is that the downstream targets of P38, for example, is substrate MSK1. Uh, is not to alter the activity of histone demethylases and uh, perhaps their histone repressive marking and demethylation. Um, we also know that MSK1 can alter phosphorylation or can phosphorylate H3 at serine 10 and 28, and it might act as a molecular switch. Um, we also know that a, in the Drosophila model, a direct target, a direct target, direct substrate of P38. A transcription factor ATF2 is known to be a part of um, HP1 alpha and K9 dimethylation complex. And upon phosphorylation, ATF2 leaves this complex and perhaps disturbs the composition of hydrochloric So we think that any of this um, or all of these changes might contribute to not organizational changes. But before we move into um, more detailed analysis, we would like to know whether overall P38 activity activity is important for NAD integrity. So we use different inhibitors, molecular inhibitors, to block P38 activity, and we, we ask the question whether uh, the presence of this, this inhibitors would affect NAD integrity after heat shock. Here is data from IMR90 cell 
samples, where you could see that uh, when we uh, performed fission alpha satellites, there was a significant drop in association of uh, alpha satellites with nucleoli after heat shock. However, the presence of uh, P38 inhibitor, uh, this dissociation is decreased, and thus we think that perhaps their um, P38 activity is important for um, this dissociation, at least um, largely, uh, largely um, that this dissociation largely relies on P38 activity. In addition to um, fish data, we also looked at the changes of uh, K9 ventilation mark in MR90. And as you can see uh, from this microscopical sections, um, while the heat shock clears the interior of the cellular nuclear, we could prevent the clearance of uh, K9 demethylation mark in the presence of this B component. These are preliminary data, and we are uh, also trying to understand if this is true across the different cell types. Um, and last but not least, I would like to share with you data from H1 cells, um, where we'll again we'll look at alpha satellite um, association with nucleoli. Nucleoli is shown in red here on uh, fish and green. Uh, we have a significant, again, drop similar to what we observed in MATS and IMR90s of alpha satellites with nucleoli. And this drop can be rescued by presence of P38 uh, inhibitor burp and um, maybe B. So with this, I would like to summarize um, my idea. Um, overall, we know that there, um, we suggest that there are two different types of nuts and um, stem cells and fibroblasts. And um, the presence of K27 trimethylation is critical for this NAS association. We know that the type 2 NAS contain developmentally regulated genes, and they vary a lot between um, stem cell and differentiated cells. We also know that type 2 are more sensitive to phase separation disturbance and heat stress. And we suggest that P38 activity mediates changes in NAS integrity of heat stress. Uh, right now, we are trying to understand whether changes in K9 dimethylation mark are preceding the changes in NAS, or these are two parallel events. So with this, I would like to um, express my thanks to uh, uh, Paul Kaufman Lab and, of course, Paul, because now I think it's very interesting uh, to end that the project is taken. This is very exciting right now to work on this project. And present and former lab members, I showed you some data from Aijan Bejanova for um, embryonic stem cells. And by informatic, um, team led by Julia Ju, um, the nut finder that is instrumental in identification of um, nut composition. Peterson Lab, Renee Mayer, Mohan, and Deca Lab. And thank you very much for your attention.